and Shamima Begum's lawyers have insisted her fight to return to the UK is nowhere near over after judges upheld the removal of her British citizenship on national security grounds. Now, the ruling means that the jihadi bride, who was just 15 when she travelled to join ISIS, will remain in a Syrian refugee camp despite the court finding that there was a credible case that she had been trafficked. Well, Begum's lawyers have now called on the current Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, to review the case again. In terms of the legal fight, that's, that's nowhere near over. We're not going to go into details about exactly what that means at this stage. I think what, what else this judgment calls out for, though, is some, some, some courage and some leadership from the Home Secretary to look at this case afresh in light of the clear and compelling factual findings that this court has made. But this afternoon, Braverman said she was pleased with the decision, tweeting, My priority is and always will be the safety and security of the UK. Now it comes as counter-terrorism police warn a growing number of British extremists are being drawn back to Syria to join jihadist groups. This case has so many different elements to it and so many whys and wherefores. My overall concern is that the decisions that the Home Secretary's subsequent Home Secretaries, a number of Home Secretaries have made, have been more to do with popularity than judicial reasoning or precedent. Because many, many people have been found guilty of terrorism acts and haven't had their citizenship revoked. And that's my concern. I have no sympathy, absolutely zero, zero sympathy with what she did. I would quite mm. happily see her rot in jail for the rest of her life. I don't really buy into that she was only a kid. Our age of criminal consent and, and responsibility is 10, which is actually, I think, too young. Too yeah, but it's considerably, hard, it's considerably lower than 15, which is what she was. I just worry that this is more to do with headlines and popularity and I think it's really interesting, the fact that the Labour Party have said absolutely nothing <laughs> about this because they know also that to bring her back is a vote <clears throat> loser. And that's my concern. But Keir Starmer has said that in the past. He just didn't say it today. But, I mean, the thing that we don't know and we will never know, I guess, is what other evidence that wasn't mm. presented in public actually says. You know, they've got stuff from the intelligence agencies which apparently was read by the judge only um, and given to um, the council but not read out in court. So... Even though they've said, for example, that, you know, there is evidence they think that, that she might have been trafficked, the other evidence which would mm. suggest that she's more of a danger to society is obviously not something we'll ever know about because we can't see it. But it's if classified. she's in prison, how no, much it's, of a danger to society Well, it's classified for her... Well, if she's a danger to society, she's a danger to society no matter where she is. I mean, you can be in prison um, and you can be orchestrating all manner of things. But I mean, also, that, I that's think... That's not the issue. The issue is we don't really know enough about the details of what they have against her which could be horrendous as far as we know. I'm and that might be why it is being conducted in the way that it is. I mean, my gut feeling today was I was pleased, actually. I was relieved. I think it's the right decision. I think people around the country, and looking at certainly at social mm. media, I think people around the yeah, country are united in this. Also, you know, I agree with you about the age of criminal responsibility. And also, this was an A-star student. This was someone who apparently was good at critical thinking. She chose to go there. She chose to marry an IS fighter. She chose I... to have children. She then wants to come back. Well, I'm sorry. That's a stretch. Well, hang on. No, well, that's but, a stretch. But I you're think saying actually, she chose you can't to get then married. Just... Yeah, but you're saying, no, but you think no one knows that she chose to get married. There, no one's saying she that chose she, to yeah, go. She, she, she chose to go she there. She wasn't but... trafficked. Under what? Oh, listen, I just listen, don't listen. Get... They said there's evidence that she may have been trafficked. I'm not saying she's trafficked or not. I'm saying that she was 15 years old. 15 years old. People make mistakes, and she has made a huge mistake. But she is. British. She is a British it's a bit more than a mistake. We're, all, all we're doing is washing our hands of her and saying, no, no. She but let's be very that. clear what today was about. It wasn't about whether she was trafficked, because they actually, in that ruling, they said there may be evidence yeah. that she was trafficked. But also, they've been very but specific about that to say that it would fit the legal definition of trafficking, which is not the same thing as trafficking. Exactly. But your point is absolutely valid, which is, at the end of the day, matters of national security override everything. Yeah. And clearly, the evidence presented today actually confirmed that decision. No, and that's, I think, is because what actually what people they at home were, want. What they were looking at today is whether Sajid Javid had, be, had been acting lawfully when mm, yeah. he took her citizenship away. Yes. It wasn't whether she was a, a massive risk 
to this country. And there are only three reasons that you're allowed to take citizenship away. One is for the public good. One is if you've got that citizenship through fraudulent means. That's clearly not the case here. And one is that you can be sent to another country. Now, that brings in this whole Bangladesh thing, which people are saying she can go to Bangladesh because she mm. had dual nationality. She Never. can't for why, many, many why? reasons. And one is that we do not extradite people to places where they could um, be, be... persecuted. Yeah, but we're, we're not... We're, I mean, we're, 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 we're not, not extraditing. We won't but be extraditing. You know, I mean, no, no, it's, it's, it's not bad luck. It's illegal for us to extradite JJ, people to where they should be executed. We don't extradite to America. Where is the evidence that she would be executed in Bangladesh? Where, where a, a government minister said it in 2019. Government ministers come out with all sorts of tripe at all times. You time. ask for evidence, that's you know, evidence. That well, it's not evidence. I don't think it's a government minister said. saying something is evidence. Sorry, right. on what also, planet also, is that you evidence? Just, you on the wait, fact that she, you can never, get executed for terrorism she wasn't charges born in, in Bangladesh. She, she wasn't born in Bangladesh and she's never lived in Bangladesh. She has a passport because her in parents Bangladesh. were born there. So uh, it, it's not it's, it's not as if she has a life there. Yeah, but here's the point. You're missing the point, I think, quite deliberately I think you're missing the point because the point is is that you said to, to stop uh, anyone from committing harm against the nation right these are matters of national security the Sajid Javid de um, decision was made as a result of matters of national security mm. in these secret files which we can't see which we haven't seen which were also referred to again today so it wasn't just about whether she could have a citizenship taken away for no reason it was whether when the citizenship was taken away for the purposes of national security whether that was still a valid reason do you think and they saw and they saw those papers which we haven't seen and they've agreed but Mike do you, do you think we're safer with her being in a camp where she can essentially escape people escape from those camps all the time it's, why doesn't she just in, escape then? Land. well eventually she may do so you think it's safer well, to have maybe she could escape to the uh, hair and makeup department in the refugee camp where yeah. she seems to I mean, go every time worried. before she gets interviewed on tv do you think we're safer with her in that camp yeah or in, definitely. A, in a british prison definitely where we know where she's making definitely. Monitor JJ, or absolutely. i'm not worried about the safety issue i don't actually think it's particularly likely that if we did bring her back she would go on to commit terror offenses here i'm much more worried about the glamorization of what she did and the mm. notion that you can go off, gad, gad off to a Absolutely. war zone like that, in which we are putting our armed forces at risk to try to reduce a threat like that. You can go off, do all those things, and then you can swan around in glossy makeup and hair on the front of magazines, and you can come back here without any big but Isabel, consequences. But if, if, if you're worried about the glamorization, which I am too, and I think the whole idea that these kids were indoctrinated, subjected to propaganda, brainwashed, whatever it was. You know, something happened to they these They just kids fancied it, to, I think. To, it was an adventure. To, 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 to yeah. No, but we, we are so often on this programme talking about online safety, talking about grooming, yeah. talking about yeah. kids who are being exposed to bad stuff on the internet. Yeah. And that is what happened to these kids. Now, I'm not saying they were good kids. Clearly, I'm not saying mm. that. But... Don't we want to work out how that happened? Don't we want to try to learn... Well, we can do but, that but, without but, but bringing it back. But have responsibility, and Isabel's yeah. point is really valid, actually. What message does this send out? It sends out, actually, that sort of behaviour will not be tolerated. And there are 150 other... Not if you bang other, her up in but, prison. But I think there are 150 other people that, that are, could be in a similar position. And, actually, I think this sends the right mis message out yeah. to people who think yeah. it might be glamorising, yeah, that yeah. they think they could go and do well, something. Well, I think the I'm reason really that this sure. happened is because whichever... Um, a sort of scenario that she was living in, and, and it's been said before that her parents were not exactly discouraging of her having these right. kinds of beliefs and this kind of jihad against the West, and they wanted to go and take part in it. It was something they believed in. I don't believe for a minute that they were somehow hoodwinked into thinking that it was a nice I new way of life. They knew precisely where they were going there. She said she hated the West. She continued she to say repentant. that after she and turned she up repentant. before she yeah. decided she wanted to come back. You know, there's absolutely an anti-West narrative. She's a dangerous individual uh, and she's a liar. And quite I don't frankly. see the I don't point think of putting her in a British a word jail. That she says. I'm not denying any of that. We all know that the prevent process is meant to prevent that it's it's, it's well, woefully it inadequate to spend most of its resources on doing entirely different things yeah. as, well, as we can see from well, the exactly, short cross but i just report. think that's part of the solution to this to try to work out how it happened how we can prevent it how we can make these don't think we need to put better. any more resources into but it just leave her where she is why should we I'm run around chasing into her tail. This thing, people are confusing Daisy and I saying, bring her back and have a try here and have her put in prison here with, let her come back and everything's forgiven. No, no, we no understand. Saying we that. do understand. We think understand she should come I'm back because she is no British. If she's point? committed a crime, she should be in a British jail. It's the other thing plenty about of people this, which that I think have committed is crimes are not in British yeah. jails. We leave plenty of but other the, British but, but, citizens but they don't have their languishing in foreign jails. No, of course, that's completely different to having your citizenship taken away. No, but she hasn't been left stateless. That's their argument, isn't it? The fact is, they say that isn't true. The letter of the law is that she could go to Bangladesh. That's what they're saying.
they're saying. That's what they're saying. It yeah. wouldn't she be legal also, for us to be Northern sent Northern her right? to Bangladesh. I know, in, in, out of all the countries in the world, only Bahrain takes more citizenships away than we do. It's a weird thing that our mm. it's not even legal to do it in America. I just think it's a bizarre thing. Well, to you do. can think that, but the other reason I think we should uh, discuss the final and ending part of it is, you know, it's said that it could cost five million quid for mm. all this legal aid that's been given yeah, to these should lawyers, do. right? Yeah. Which Absolutely. should be stopped immediately. You yeah. know, I don't mind her having a chance to, to appeal. She's appealed. She's lost. That's the end of it. No yeah. more legal aid. If she wants to try and fund it herself, fine. Yeah. But we should not be paying Maybe from doing some more podcasts. Yeah. Maybe a bit of modelling on the side, you know? Exactly. <laughs> well, there we have <laughs> it. Podcast and modelling. Good riddance. <laughs> it's the future for Shamima Pagan. <laughs>